finally. I got the hang of dealing with scenarios, for today these northern decks will follow a core template. This consists of siege machines, humans, and some removers to make things easier. This is why I don't carry defenders anymore. Purify and Vincent really screwed them over. This will all be yours, boy. Passing like this was too risky, but I got tired of dealing with those whore sons. Their bonded ability is just too much. At least these mutants just score one point at a time and not wipe my side of the board. I really ought to not kill some of this flutter. Our path over. The job's a job. From White Sand. I was being too greedy here though. Five humans was good enough to transform into Revan Ants. I could have used those immortals before using heat wave. I realized that the sword is good to have, compared to a cheap 4 power remover, or an overpriced destroyer. Most units have 5 power and the sword can potentially destroy something higher. A 2. Damn, what luck. Next is the uprising version, as provisions increase, so does the quality of the cards you can have, the only thing different about this deck is that it has the war chariot now. My goal here was to make a template that can be independent from the leader abilities, so all of the decks you will see today was made in consideration of lockdown. If you need to, go all out, even if it's just round one, as long as you only use one combo, you still have more fight in you, for the next round, while your opponent either retreats, or deplete their powers. Away from my webs! so much, it's just unfortunate, that Siege Machine as an archetype, sucks when it's alone. Siege makes bombardment work, and it might have looked even way cooler, with four machines on the board, just to wipe your opponent. The problem is that the useful machines need soldiers for their crew ability, and resupply makes things worse, because there's only a handful, of good warfare cards.
Okay, now I know this is too much, but I assure you Zeal is still useful even without those dual craze knights. This was not insane to imagine, and besides, those knights are annoying to manage without Zeal, 10 props would just die off for nothing. I doubted that he could pull a 15 point swing, but I didn't know his hand was this bad. Stop your yapping and start! He actually had an amazing comeback, despite being two cards down, and it made me question the quality of my decks, but in the end, whether you think it's luck, or not, when you win with a particular deck more often, you'll realize that those coincidences are actually inevitabilities. Boosting helps Visigurd with his ammo, but the most important thing is that a lot of your units can survive. Renvid, may not look like it, but he is a good addition to this deck, that needs humans. Have a look at that! If the king demands a... Left, right... I used to carry those drummers, along with Anna. But I realized later, that they just got in the way, in completing the combos, with drag, and siege, even though they're humans, too much of them, leaves no room for machines. They get killed easily as well, and seized at worst. He won, but at the cost of his leader ability. This is why you should hold back, most of the time, because you only need, a 1 point advantage, to win the game, not 20 points. If you don't want your opponent to retaliate, then 9 to 15 points would have been enough. An 8 point lead would have been ideal, because even if your opponent wins in one turn, they'll most likely use their best card which depletes their chances on the next round. I thought it was odd for him to avoid the range row, my trap could never wipe four Revan hands. This one is powerful, 
but try to hold back, or else you'll overshoot your score, and your opponent just passes, while you run out of combos. You also need to check what you can summon, although, the easiest thing to use this ability on, is for Siege, as you summon a trebuchet. Elves are way too powerful, I'm still not on the side of nerfing cards though, adding more power to other cards, instead might produce better results, like for example the neutral caravan, is much more powerful, than the faction immortals, the solution should be to add more abilities or synergies, and not nerf the caravan which ruins the fun in using them. I used to think that cards like Longkeeper are a waste of provisions, but now that artifacts are making a good comeback, their value is now somewhat there. Like I still wish that Heaver has an alternative ability, just so he doesn't become a dud, but, it is what it is, Royal Decreed is, for now, the solution to either shelf Heaver when he's useless, and pull him out when needed. sleepy at this time, but despite all the mistakes, I still won her, and this was where I realized, that it's not a matter of luck anymore, but rather my opponents lack the support their good cards need. Regis for example needs a damage engine to set things up, and my opponent had none. Of all the decks today, Vicious Slash has been the most comfortable to use. Since this deck lacks Yennefer's Invocation, you can be at ease to know that you can fight back pesky units at will, and even if you face lockdown, at least the deck wasn't built around that ability, that's the beauty of an independent deck. It's crazy how Nilfgaard can use Masquerade twice with the Sire, even though it's my favorite faction, it's still insane. But I found out that winning is not winning anymore, so I'm not keen on using that combo. Using Masquerade once is already enough to win the game, but that's for another video. Boimir and Vesigurd is really a good combo to rely on. Even without drag, it's good to have other combos, just in case you exhausted the main ones like Seas. Although, if you try to cram in a lot of different archetypes in one deck, the result would just be the bare minimum, that's why most of the decks today, technically only has drag and siege as the main combos. No knights, orders, engines, or other surprises that might shock your opponent, but then they'll get over it, and you lose the game. Common. Charges may not be the best thing to have with this template but it still works. Although, War Chariot needed to be replaced with Foltest Pride, just so this leader ability can be of use. With spawning and boosting so rampant these days, there's always room for more damage. Retaining Elite is so worth having, it just wasted the opponent's 5 power remover, thinking they got a good value out of it. I'm still leading in the score, and the chances for my revenants and machines to survive increases. I might have went 
went overboard with this round. Sorry for not following my own advice, but I still have drag. Besides, when you're having fun, winning and winning too much be Are you winning, son? becomes a non-issue. Yeah, I'm winning, Dad. Time for you to die, Duan. Also, defenders are only useful if you have something worth protecting. Since I don't use those cards with big swings, but with an order wall, or those powerful engines, that needs all the turns, just to get its full value, I dropped all defenders, it might be worth protecting scenarios, but holding back, has become an effective way, to avoid bomb heaver, and getting your defender seized is a nightmare. Better late than never right. I know that the next expansion is coming very soon, but it was fun experimenting on something other than Nilgar. Monsters would have been the next deck to make a video on, but I might as well wait for the expansion and make newer decks from here. I thought it would have taken longer to rank up, and I was surprised that some things still work well, but in the end, using the new cards were necessary just to get past rank 5. Scenario as an artifact was just worth it. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.